Hello everyone. Welcome back to one more session. I am Arun Kumar. I have different vegetables. Please don't misunderstand me that you know I'm going to prepare any recipe here. Actually, I just want this to explain and one more concept that is genus. We have already understood what is exactly taxonomic hierarchy. In taxonomic hierarchy, there are seven obligate categories. How many? Seven obligate categories. That is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. We know what is species. Species means group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities. Genus. So what is exactly genus? Okay, so genus can be defined as group of related species. Okay. So whatever the species which belongs to genus should show certain common features, should exhibit certain common features features actually so very simple we can understand this by taking three different organisms see this is potato one organism this is tomato and brinjal okay so first let me just write the scientific name of this potato potato scientific name is solanum tuberosum okay see this is the scientific name of potato see scientific name in the sense binomial nomenclature actually see you could see this is the genus name of the organism whereas this is the species name of the organism you have already understood in binomial nomenclature concept actually okay so solanum is the genus and tuberosum is the species okay so this is solanum tuberosum okay i'll write here potato okay and let us take this now this is tomato the scientific name of this organism is Solanum lycopersicum. Okay, so Solanum is the genus, Lycopersicum is the species name of tomato. Okay, I'll write here tomato. Okay, we'll take one more species that is the brinjal. Solanum melongena. Okay, so Solanum melongena is the scientific name of brinjal. So what is common here? See the genus Solanum, Solanum, Solanum. But when it comes to the species, all the three different organisms are belongs to different species. The species is different now, correct? Okay, so this E is actually the thing to remember. The polytypic genus. What is exactly polytypic genus? So what is poly here? Many, correct? Type, many, different types. That is different types of species but belongs to the same genus. If the genus containing more than two or three different types of species then obviously it is actually called as polytypic genus so this is nothing but you, know, you can easily understand so what is exactly genus now group of related species see potato tomato and uh, this brinjal you know even though they are different species but you know they share certain common features got it so certain common features and all belongs to solanum got it so this is actually the genus and particularly polytypic genus so this is the good example for polytypic genus if one particular genus is containing more or different types of species okay i'll write different types of species then it is called as polytypic genus very important for need actually remember i'll show one more example actually okay so you know that this is uh, the lion and this is actually the tiger so this the scientific name of the lion is panthera leo and this is panthera tigris what is common here panther is common right okay we'll write here so panthera is common that means this particular genus is having more or different types of species correct so this is leo a different species this is tigris a different species but they share common features so as a result they belongs to the same genus called as panthera so this is a good example for polytypic genus very simple genus group of related species they have certain characters which are common okay so we go to the another one that is monotypic genus mono means one or single single type okay that means one genus i'll write here one genus must contain only one species in the existing world 
so at the present this particular genus should contain only one species for example let me take or myself as example actually say i am homo sapiens in the right now actually in the existing world homo sapiens obviously sapiens the species are one right only like you know human beings are there right so for example see in homo genus see our genus is homo all right here actually so homo sapiens so this is actually our scientific name human beings actually okay in the existing world this particular genus is having only one type of species that is sapiens though so that is a good example for monotypic genus so that means this genus is containing only one species remember it very very important actually see well, you know about in the human evolution homo erectus or homo habilis were there actually it's about like you know billions of years ago but now in the existing world they are extinct you don't see any species belongs to homo except sapiens so homo sapiens is a good example for monotypic genus very simple what is genus now group of related species what is this related they share some characters that is the different species share some characters obviously they should belongs to the genus actually okay so very simple one more example to make it clear so i write different numbers here so 1 2 3 and i write alphabets a b c correct so 1 2 3 belongs to numbers group whereas a b c belongs to alphabet that means we have two different groups one is a number the other one is alphabet correct so let us take 1 2 3 as different species and a b c as different species so here n that is number can be compared to the genus that means this one gene okay, i'll write here the genus 1 and this is genus 2 the alphabet can be compared to genus 2 a different genus actually so this genus 1 contains different species but they have certain characters right they have some some similar characters right okay they share certain features so that is genus 1 they all belongs to genus 1 whereas a b c also exhibit certain common features but still they are different species that belongs to genus two so this is actually the thing the genus is the group of related species